goodness, you know, so one thing that was on my bucket list forever that's something I've always wanted to do, something I've never done is fish in Alaska. You know, people ask me all the time, have you ever fished in Alaska? No, you know, and something I've always wanted to do. And one of the things that really intrigued me was just some of the stream fishing opportunities, whether it's steelhead or some of the ocean run salmon. And just something that always knew I had to do it. And so this year, I had a friend here in Devil's Lake named Corey Anderson's been going up to Alaska. He's probably been up there 20 times, I don't know, quite a few times over the years. And uh, he go, tries to go up every summer. And so we latched on with him and he knew of a few places where he's been in the past that he really liked. And so we went out of Alaska, was Alaska Trophy Fishing Safari is a place that we went out to. Yep. And uh, it was called the Mal Malchatna River. Malchatna. I, I always, yeah, I always butcher the verbiage, but uh, incredible trip. And so logistically, we weren't able to bring a, a camera crew up. We were, we were staying in wall tents in really remote area. Uh, no way to charge batteries, no way to, you know, dump footage. And so it definitely can be done, but something where we wanted to kind of go up and scout it out to see what it was all about and then just then see what we could do to, to get our big cameras and our camera crew up there. But I did take a lot of footage. And so what I thought we'd do is we just kind of show some different aspects of the trip and uh, some of the different fish catches, some of the scenery with just the, just basically my handheld footage. But uh, it was an incredible experience, definitely something that scars you. I don't think you can go to Alaska and fish and do something like that and not want to go back there every year. I mean, it's just I incredible. People told me that the pictures don't do the landscape justice and it's true. I mean, it's just like, oh my God. I mean, it just, it was just the scenery was incredible. So we flew into Anchorage first night, next morning, we flew to what was it, Lake Iliama, Iliamna. Yeah, yeah. And that was incredible, flying yeah. through these paths. What What was your thoughts on that plane ride? It was just like mountains on either side. It was just oh, crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was Glaciers just... Glaciers and... Yeah, it was just oh, wow. wow. It was, yeah. Our jaws were hanging down to our knees when we were flying through this pass. And we land on Lake Iliamna, which is just a small... I mean, there's a sea store there. I mean, very remote, tiny town. And... From there, then we took float planes in the rest way. We probably had, what, an hour float plane ride? Yeah. And so then we land on this Malchatna River, which flows into Bristol Bay. And from what I understand, from what you know, just people tell me, I'm no, I don't know much about Alaska or, or salmon fishing, but people say that on a lot of these rivers, the king runs aren't what they used to be. Like on the Kenai River, it's shoulder to shoulder people, a lot of people. People are fishing from boats, you know, they're catching them out in the ocean, but uh, the catch rates are pretty low for the kings, whereas Ironically, the sockeye runs are setting records, and so even the Melchatna River, the sockeye run is supposed to be one of the highest recorded runs ever. Uh, the that Brist Bristol Bay run is evidently one of the last great king salmon runs, you know, compared to what it used to be historically. And so, we land this float plane on this small river. I mean, the de deepest part of this river is maybe six, seven feet where we were. Most of it's even. Yeah, I mean, most of it's shallow. It's a very fast river, and. Uh, we land float planes on this river, and we basically spent the week up there, you know, one of the most remote places left in the world. Uh, what was your favorite part about the trip as far as, not the fishing, but just the scenery and the adventure of it? Probably the fly in and fly out of the scenery and everything, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then to be able to do something like that with my son, I mean, that was a once in a lifetime bucket list thing for me. And then to have you, <laughs> I mean, it was, it's something we'll remember when we're on our, when we're laying in nursing home someday, many years from now, hopefully. It's yeah. definitely something we'll both yeah. never forget. And that's what life's about is making those memories with your family and kids and parents. I mean, it's, I mean, it's as good as it gets. And so we land in this little river, we get situated in the camp and we start fishing immediately. And uh, goodness, we caught quite a few fish the first day. Oh, I mean, wow, yeah. I mean, I think you caught a king, a pretty nice king over probably 32 inches mm -hmm. within fish. five minutes of throwing your lure in. Yeah. And so basically what we were fishing with, you know, the guides run the boats up there and um, we're in a, I don't know, maybe a 12-foot boat. It's not a very big 12-foot John boat, more or less, with maybe a 9-9 on it, maybe a 15 horse on the back. I can't remember what they had for motors. There's exactly. a couple of boats with jet drives. Yeah. But we start fishing, and basically we're, we're just drifting through these holes where the water's a little bit deeper and a little bit slower for the kings. And uh, just drifting with a Vibrex spinner or a MEPS spinner, or sometimes you put spawn sack on it, which seemed to help, but you didn't have to have that. And... Uh, you were hooked up within the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, goodness, we caught quite a few fish that afternoon just staying close to camp. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so we got a taste of it the first day. I thought, boy, this is pretty neat. We didn't go a mile from the camp. We probably got mm, 10, 15 fish. Yeah, and, and these king salmon, I mean, they fight 
<laughs> <laughs> what, would, what would you describe? The, was that the hardest fighting fish you've ever had on? Yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, they, they go, oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. they, they have some horsepower. And so that was pretty cool. Now, the next day, so we were on a, up there for six days. Mm -hmm. So the next day we go out, and I think the highlight of that day, if I remember correctly, what would be the highlight for you the second the day? The 38-inch uh, king. Yeah, so that was one of the biggest kings. Well, that was the biggest king that we caught, two yeah. of us. One of the bigger kings caught in camp. I think I heard a 42-incher was caught. Yeah. But and they evidently were... later on in the run, some of those bigger fish show up, and mm -hmm. so they're probably catching some of those big fish mm -hmm. right now. But uh, it was a beautiful fish, 38-inch. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. it had to have been well over 30 pounds, maybe maybe mid. I mean, it was built. I mean, it was, it was... a beautiful, beautiful fish and just took you up and down the river. How long did that fight last, do you figure? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, it took a while. So then we had to pull up on shore to be able to land it, and it... It was cool. I mean, it was it yeah. was really really cool, and the shore lunches were incredible. I oh, mean, very great. Yeah. I mean, I mean, some of us where you're at, you're hungry. You're in this beautiful place. Eating a candy bar would taste great in Alaska, but I think there's something to be said for just fresh salmon cooked over an open fire. That was something I looked forward to every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was that was good. What was your favorite way that they made the salmon? Mm, I don't know. It was that one day Jack? Yep, yep. He made that one sound. I don't know how you would make it. Yeah, he was it. using just a Traeger seasoning. I remember what seasoning it was. Yeah, in fact, so Jack and then there was, um, oh, who was the kid that got burned? Oh, Luke. Luke, yeah. So it was interesting. We get all the way up into Alaska and there's a bunch of kids up there from South Dakota that are going to school in Brookings. And so a lot of them were going into fisheries management and biology and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. So we had a connection with, you know, a lot of these guys right away when we got there. And then, and then in camp too, we shared camp with a couple of guys from Fargo. And one of them I'd met before up at Bud's Gun of Sale. So that was pretty cool. But really, really fun group of guys. Yeah, the rest of the guys are from Wisconsin. Great guys to share this camp with. But uh, did shore lunch every day. Mm -hmm. And then we had tents set up where we did meals and stuff in the evening. And we just fished. I mean, we, we put in long days. I mean, we, I mean, it was, it was incredible. And so, over the course of the week, I, I can't tell you how many salmon we caught. We must have averaged at least 15, maybe more, maybe 20 fish a day. I, I don't know. Seems I, about right. I mean, it, not not to over exaggerate. What I thought was really cool, which you know, it's always neat to catch a fish for the first time or hold a fish in your hands for the first time. So I'd caught. King salmon before, but they're always, you know, Lake Michigan fish or Lake Sakakawi. I've never caught an actual Pacific run king salmon. So that's a whole different creature and uh, it just, just incredible. And here's something I thought it was amazing. So they've got these, uh, these record sockeye runs happening, which we were a little early for that, but there was still, oh, there's still tons of them. a lot of sockeye in the river. I mean, you go up in these shallow, more slack water areas. I mean, they'd be just stacked. It wasn't that something just seeing all those fish. Yeah, if you can just look down, there's just like herds of them. Just <laughs> herds, yes, yeah. I mean, that would be a good explanation. It wasn't a school of salmon, it was a herd. I mean, it was like stampede, but uh, uh, we did fish for them a little bit. Uh, in fact, we did catch a really nice sockeye on a spinner one day. It was a very silver fish, like it just came out of the ocean. But most of these salmon, you know, they were plumed out. You know, the males got the beautiful kite going. I love it when they get those colors, those spawning colors. But when they come inland, you know, they don't really strike lures anymore. And so the, the thing about the sockeyes is, you know, people are snagging them in some areas or they're doing what's called flossing where you run your line through their jaw and you hook them on the face with your hook. And so that's the only way you can catch them. And I'd never done that before. It wasn't really a big thing for me, but I thought, you know what, I'm here. I want to do it and try it and, um, you know, say I did it. And, uh, and I just wanted to hold one of my hands. They just look so cool in the water and they're just such a beautiful fish. And so we fished for them a couple of times. And uh, one day we caught four, and then the other day I think we caught one or two. So we caught a handful of them, and uh, it was neat. I mean, I, I, it was cool. I mean, it would be a lot cooler if they were hitting lures, like we're casting, reeling, and they're hitting a spinner like, a, like the kings were. But uh, what really fascinated me about the sockeyes was that they fought so hard. Wasn't that something? I mean, you'd hook yeah. into them, and I mean, very few of the king salmon we caught jumped. These sockeyes would jump. They would, I mean, they were just bulldogs. And they were just beautiful sockeyes. I mean, a lot of them are 22 to maybe 26 inches long, so they're just beautiful sockeyes. You know, what's amazing to me is just the difference between freshwater and the ocean, where we've caught that same species of fish in Montana, in Idaho, 
different places out west where you know the kokanee salmon is basically a sockeye that's stocked by a hatchery to provide a fishing opportunity and fresh water. It's basically a put and take type deal. People love the kokanees because they're great to eat. And I mean if you get a kokanee that's this long, that's you know, that's a big one, right? You go the same fish, they get a chance to go out in that ocean, they come back to that stream and they're this big and they're that I mean unbelievable difference between salt water and fresh water. I thought that was pretty interesting. And yeah. so we did the the, co uh, the sockeye thing and ate a few of them for shore lunch and it was cool. It's one of the neatest fish I've ever held in my hands. Obviously one of the beautiful, most beautiful fish, bright red like a tomato and then the green face, you know, with the males. And, um, and then uh, the other thing that we did, and there's a couple of chum salmon caught. I, we never caught a chum salmon. I would love to see one of those too. Yeah. There was a couple of silver salmon caught, which was unusual because they normally run a lot later. So just a few of the early fish. Um, we did catch quite a few rainbow trout. A lot, yeah. And that was pretty neat. And the rainbows were, you know, they're we didn't catch anything over 20 inches, but lots of, say, 15, 15 to maybe 19 inch fish. And I, evidently they do get, you know, they, they do get fish over 20 inches. And those aren't a steelhead. That's just a native fish that's in the river. What's neat about that t particular strain is they're, they're spotted like a leopard. I mean, just just beautiful, beautiful fish. And then we caught some Arctic grayling, which I thought was pretty cool. That was cool, cool yeah. I mean, they were beautiful. I, I'd caught a few Arctic grayling in the Yukon, so I'd caught them before, but the Arctic grayling I caught in the Yukon were about this big, and they didn't have much of a dorsal fin. And these fish here were just, I mean, they had the sail, and they were just gorgeous, and they had the black squiggles on the bottom. I mean, they were just a cool, probably one of the most prettiest probably one of the prettiest fish I've ever held in my hand. Just a cool looking fish and they fought hard for their size. Yeah. And so it's kind of a lot of neat different highlights, a lot of different things that were first for us, caught first sockeye, first ocean run king salmon. Did you catch a grayling? Yes I did. Okay so you caught your first grayling, I caught my biggest grayling, it was like a 16, 17 incher. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, Arctic char. char yeah. Arctic char. We caught a couple of Arctic char which uh, was the first Arctic char I'd ever caught. And so that was kind of a neat thing for me. Um, Arctic char were maybe 17, 18 inches long. We didn't get anything real big, but it was just neat to hold a different new fish in your hands. You know, one one thing I thought was pretty cool is you know you pull up on shore, you'd pull up on shore to do these shore lunches, um, and there's bear tracks, there's yeah. wolf tracks, there's bald eagles, there's ospreys. I mean, they're just really neat. You know, be huge, enormous beaver dams all over. Uh, just uh, there, you know, there's that area. You know, there's caribou. I mean, it's just a just a really a wild scenic part of the world. You know, some of the boats would go south of the camp or down river, some of the boats would go up river, and you're just looking for these big long holes, and the kings would be in a little bit, I you mean, know, they'd be in slower water, but, you know, these deeper troughs, you know, kind of the same type of spots you'd look for walleyes in current seams and things that were, you know, just a touch deeper, um, log jams, you know, just things that provided a current break. And with the kings, you know, you'd catch, you know, basically everything as far as you know, you'd catch some rainbows and some grayling and some arctic char mixed in with those kings. Uh, with the vibrexes and the meps, you know, we caught mostly kings, but if you just put a spawn sack out, you know, you'd catch everything. But one thing that we did the last day that I just had a ball with, and I don't know if you were into it as much, it's all right, but we best. spent a day fly fishing. And you caught your first rainbow on a fly rod. I thought that was pretty cool, you yeah. know, casting it from shore. Mm -hmm. That was cool. And then... Uh, what was amazing to me is that we'd be we'd been fishing these spots all week, and we'd caught a few grayling and a few arctic char and a few rainbows. We put that fly rod out with just a bead pattern, and it was you couldn't keep it in the water for more than five minutes. It was just more than a minute. I mean, it was just constant. I mean, we were catching fish constantly, and uh, just a little bit smaller presentation. And so we caught a few king salmon on the fly rod. I had a big king on that uh, just wrapped me up on a log or a log jam. But um, that's something that, um, you know, I, I wish I would have discovered sooner. I, th I thought it was a ball. I mean, catching up, I mean, those fish just fight so much harder on those fly rods. And even the grayling were just so much fun on a fly rod. And so that was really cool. Um, definitely go back. I'm going to do a lot more fly fishing. I mean, I like the spinning stuff too, don't get me wrong. And I caught way more fish and way bigger fish on the spinning rod, especially with the king salmon. But... I don't know, just something about that fly rod and all the rainbows and grayling and caught some arctic char with it and, and um, just the, the challenge when you do get a king on, I mean it's like, yeah, just an incredible trip, definitely love to go back there. 
I mean, yeah. it's definitely something you see it and taste it. Yeah, I don't know if you can ever do that and not want to return some. Yeah. I think that leaves a mark. I think there's a lot of people in Alaska that aren't from Alaska. I think what happens is they go up there when they're 18 years old and you never see them again. They never come back. <laughs> and now after being up there, I can see why. So pretty cool place.